By the time hurricane winds arrived on the Gulf Coast, Georges had already been raining heavily here for more than a day with no let up. Here's Jerry Huff about midway through the storm. 10, 12, 14 inches. Now right in the middle, right uh, to the north and the west of Pensacola, we're showing 15 to 20 inches of rain. For Rainfall totals included an astonishing 38 inches in Munson and nearly 30 inches in Baymanette. Gulf Breeze, Milton, and Eglin Air Force Base racked up over two feet of rain with one to two feet in Crestview, Spanish Fort, Mobile, and Pascagoula. Storm surge backed up the rivers and that rain had nowhere to go. Fish and crabs were swimming in downtown Mobile. And it's pretty deep too. We're, we're towed up to six feet in some places. If you look behind me, you can just see where the Mobile River is and it's almost as if someone just opened up a door and just let the water just pour in down here. The worst of Georgia's weather arrived in the middle of the night and nobody likes that. Oh Boom. my goodness. There. Did you see that? And is now at uh, 356, four minutes before four o'clock on this Monday morning, about to make landfall perhaps in the next uh, hour, maybe even less than that. Georges was a category two hurricane at landfall with 100 to 110 mile per hour sustained winds and gusts over 170 miles per hour. I won't be here to, for a long, long time because the wind is getting so strong. Whoa, what a wall of water. Actually, we hadn't planned on that. Destructive storm surge reached five to 10 feet in the Florida Panhandle, seven to 12 feet along the Alabama coast, peaking in Fort Morgan, and around nine feet near Biloxi. Storm surge wiped 40 homes off Dauphin Island and damaged 80 more. Hundreds of homes, condos, and businesses were damaged along the coastline in Alabama, Florida, and Mississippi. Almost every square inch of the News 5 area was touched by some part of George, according to a much younger me. Amazing to see the pictures live from southeast Mississippi, southwest Alabama, and Florida, and to see how widespread this storm is. It's big. And yes, that's Drexel Gilbert from 20 years ago, along with a lot of other familiar folks that you still see on WKRG News 5. Welcome back to our continuing coverage of Hurricane George. George started near the Cape Verde Islands on September 13th and got stronger fast. Two days later, it was a Category 4 storm with 155 mile per hour sustained winds. George was responsible for 602 deaths, mostly in the Dominican Republic and Haiti. One person died from flooding in Mobile. Like the flooding, memories of Georges eventually receded, overwhelmed by the catastrophe caused by Ivan and Katrina a few years later. But by any measure, Georges was a deadly, destructive, and scary storm. We will be here 24 hours a day until the threat of Hurricane George is over. Coverage you can count on, WKRG 5. 20 years later, that's still how the first alert storm team operates. Meteorologist John Nodar, WKRG News 5, then, as now, local coverage you can count on.